So we're gonna try gluten-free, dairy-free, another recipe today. This one's gonna be Linja's compost cookies. We've already made this recipe at home following the proper recipe. Um, my kids really love watching Linja on YouTube. So they really wanted to make this. And it's fun because I can't show you the actual recipe. You can get the book if you really want it. Um, but they give you a lot of choice in what mix in sweet and savory mix ins, whether you do potato chips or pretzels or chocolate chips or sprinkles. So, what I've got is I got these awesome, they're candy coated chocolate chips, and I got natural colored sprinkles. And they're cleaner, cleaner sprinkles than regular sprinkles. These just candy coated chocolate but it's dairy free chocolate cocoa solids cocoa butter sugar and then they're coated so I'm excited to give these a try hopefully they're good and then I picked up some sweet and sweet pretzels and there's and I got some Lay's potato chips I don't normally eat them but it felt like the right way to go for these compost cookies so let's try convert this recipe and give it a go. So let's get our flour, baking soda, and salt in a bowl. Baking soda. And I like to switch stuff um, to gluten-free flour. Really, I love to use almond flour. You guys know that it's in almost everything we make at the bakery, but it is trickier to convert recipes. So I like to use sort of a blend we've created here, tapioca and millet and sorghum and a touch of xanthan gum. Makes for easy gluten free or at least a good start and you can go from there and then see how your stuff bakes up and if you need to tweak anything. But it's, it's usually a good start. Also when I do this, I like to sort of downsize batches it calls for multiple eggs i will reduce the batch size till it's one egg just in case it's a complete flop you've wasted less ingredients and if it's good then you can make it again and you can scale it up after that so we've got our flour now i'm going to get our coconut oil warm in here today. We've had some really warm weather lately, so coconut oil is nice and softened. If you try to do this in the winter, I mean it is winter right now, but <laughs> if you do it in the dead of winter and you find your coconut oil is super duper solid, you can pop it in the microwave real fast and uh, it'll soften it up. We use coconut oil differently in different recipes. Sometimes we melt it and add it to our cookie recipe. Sometimes we use it more like this softened consistency like today so that it acts more like butter. Okay, now for sugar, instead of the brown sugar, we're gonna use coconut sugar. And we're gonna put it into our mixing bowl because we're gonna cream our sugars and our coconut oil first, so. There is our quote unquote brown sugar. And then for white sugar, we get this organic cane sugar. Now it's really, really got really big crystals. If you put that in your cookies, you're gonna have crunchy cookies. So we actually put it through our high speed blender to powder it. So it dissolves better. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna add your butter and our oil. I need a spatula because it's stuck in there. Okay, and then we need some vanilla. We add vanilla to just about everything. Sometimes you can leave it out of very chocolatey stuff. Um, for the most part, it goes in everything. It just enhances the flavor of baked goods. So does salt. We're gonna do an egg. I 
you don't want to do egg. We've had quite a bit of success switching out eggs for flax. Sometimes it will change the texture. It will get rid of the softness and make it a little more crisp, but they're still delicious. So let's get this in the mixer. while you're creaming it to stop it every now and then. Scrape the sides down. Sometimes you'll have chunks. Chunks of oil that aren't mixing in. This looks pretty good though. But we'll put it back down for another minute. Okay, so next we're gonna prep our mix. Let's get this guy. We like that combo too. One of our top favorite cookies here at the bakery is our sweet and salty chocolate chip cookies. Really excited to try out these new sprinkles. Oh, well, those are so cool. Oh, shell's really hard, but they're tasty. Maybe we'll do some of that. Maybe we'll get some regular dark chocolate chips too. Mm. <laughs> That's not going to work. chill them for an hour before we bake them. I had the oven preheating thinking we could pop them right in but we can't. So I've changed the oven temperature. We're going to bake off our sourdough and then when the sourdough's out we will get these, these in the oven. These look awesome. They look so colorful. So I just have a I've got a plastic tray with parchment on it just because it's smaller to fit into our fridge. This batter is very wet. It's probably because it's very warm in here. So coconut oil is on the melted side, which it's a good idea to chill these for a little bit. Otherwise, especially with coconut oil, your cookies are going to spread a lot. A lot of the recipes we do here cause for, call for freezing or chilling at least before baking. Very few of them can pop right into the oven. What do we got? We got nine. Can we make ten? Okay, nine in the These look really fun. I'm gonna pop them in the fridge and we'll see you in a bit. So our cookies have chilled for an hour. Now they're nice and hard. cookie sheet out now. Now if you have a big enough fridge and a small enough cookie sheet, you could chill your cookies on the cookie sheet. I'm going to put these in our oven at 325, but it's fan, so it's equivalent to 350 in a home oven. That's what I would do. I'm going to start with eight minutes and then we see what they look like, whether we need more time or if next time we want to do it a little shorter. Okay, our top oven has sourdough in it. We're going to put these in our bottom oven. Well, look, it's yummy. 
know the candy in there. Thin and crispy. So it's thin and crispy. Get the sweet, I get the salty. See the sprinkles, the sprinkles have changed color when they baked. But that happens with natural colors. Did it spread a lot more? Sorry, there's customers walking by. Did it spread a lot more than the original recipe we did at home? What I don't like is I don't like the candy coated chocolate chips in here. They've got a weird crunchy texture now that they're baked. So I would redo it and maybe just do chocolate chips instead of the crunchy bits. But it's really good. And if you want a little less spread, maybe I'll adjust the flour before I add the recipe in the description so they spread a little less. But pretty good. It's two for two. Can we make it gluten-free?